Okay, so we're looking at the, the sales order. And of course, in the sales order, we know what are the things it contains. Customer and material information, pricing conditions for each item, delivery dates and quantities, shipping information, billing information, things like that. You know, standard things that you use. Overview, header, and item view of the document. Okay, so now picking. Uh, picking is the process where you physically pick the items from the warehouse. Right? So you've got here uh, the outbound delivery, and then you create a transfer order for it to be picked. Right? In fact, you don't create a transfer order, you'll create a transfer uh, requirement, and the warehouse people will create the transfer order, but here it's just sort of combined here. Right? So you've got that document. Now, uh, you, you know, the pick list is the actual list based on which the picking will occur inside the warehouse. Right. So obviously when you create the pick list, you want to make it very easy for the people who are doing the picking. Uh, so you can combine materials from different deliveries into this one picking list. Or uh, you can also sort them, the materials by bin and by material, so that it's easy for them to pick up effectively, uh, efficiently, to carry out that process efficiently. That's all. Okay. So the picking list is really the physical uh, list that says these are all the items that need to be picked up from you know in these quantities from these locations inside the warehouse okay so that's a very physical kind of a document there okay and of course transfer orders are generated only for items that need picking remember we were speaking about it which is items that need picking are items which are in storage locations that are under warehouse management Okay, so here we're looking at the uh, picking process where you've got the you know delivery and the shipping point is under warehouse control, right? And uh, this creates the transfer order, and the transfer order causes uh, you know creates the pick list as we saw earlier, based on which actual picking will be done, and then the pick quantity is updated on the delivery, right? The picking quantity is updated on the delivery, saying 50 units have been picked based on the confirmation that somebody who picked would enter. So that is updated. So this is the overall uh, process which is happening inside the warehouse, which is the transfer request is created. Based on that, a transfer order is created. Based on that, internally they generate a pick list. And then somebody goes and actually picks and then confirms the transfer order. Okay. So once the order is confirmed, the quantities are updated on the delivery. Okay. Packing. So once again, packing is talking about, you know, physically packing up the items. So you've got all these items. Okay. You may pack them in multiple levels of, uh, you know, physical containers. Right. So you may put them into cartons. Right. The first one is going in a carton of its own. These two are going in one carton. And this is actually split into two cartons. Whatever is required. Right. And th that will also be controlled by some of the item properties, uh, how it is supposed to be shipped and what is the weight, uh, all of those kinds of considerations, which we are not going into in great detail here. Right? And then we may also uh, combine some shipping units into other shipping units. But incidentally, all of these are shipping units, right? SU1, SU2, etc., cartons, pallets, and things like that. Okay? So you can combine some of these into other shipping units. And then, of course, combine all of them into this one big shipping unit, which is the container. Right. So that is all. Those are all the kinds of things that could happen in the whole shipping process. Okay. Which is all the packing aspect of it. Right. So once you packed it, of course, you it'll be loaded, and it'll go. Right. So at that point, once you've completed all of that, you'll post goods issue. Right. So till this point in time, all the material is still considered as being with us in our stock. At this point, you say, okay, it's going off to the customer, post goods issue, they're no more with us. Okay, our inventory has gone down by so much. Okay. So goods issue posting, that's what this is. An outbound delivery finally has resulted uh, in a goods issue posting. And uh, here's the outbound delivery. And of course, there's lots of implications of the goods issue. First of all, Prior to this goods issue posting, if you looked at the stock requirements list, 
right? Let's say you're talking of an item who have you have hand uh, on hand stock of 500 units, okay? But you've just picked 100 units for a particular sales order, okay? So that is counted as part of your 500, right? But this 100 is actually dedicated to the sales order, right? So that is a requirement. It's a requirement for a particular sales order, right? So when you try to find what you really have on hand, this 100 cannot be considered as freely available. It's for this order. It's already been picked, okay? So, so now that it's been picked, you've reduced. So there is a requirement of 100 units sitting out there. But now that you've posted goods issue, you, that requirement of 100 should be taken away. It's not there anymore because it's been picked. And of course, stock is also reduced by that quantity. So that is the updating that is taking place here. You know? And of course, stock is also updated. So that is what this is showing you. That posting of goods issue is going to reduce stock and it also is going to reduce requirements. Okay? So that's going on. And then, of course, you'll be updating other prior documents with the information that this good has been, you know, goods issue has taken place against the order, against the quotation, etc. Right? And of course, once you post goods issue, there's a billing due list. Right? Because now the customer has to be billed. So you'll create a billing due list for this for this customer. Right? There's a there's a uh, there's an item created in the customer's account. And later on, when they the billing people try to see, okay, what are all the things we need to bill? This will come out as an open item, right? So an open item is created for the customer. Uh, and then, of course, uh, controlling documents are generated because now we have booked sales revenue. Okay, so controlling documents will be generated. And of course, there's a accounting document for stock valuation as well because stock has gone down by so much, right? And it will be evaluated at cost of goods sold. So that accounting document will be created. Okay, so all of these effects take place on a goods issue posting. <clears throat> okay, so the two terms that in all these course materials you find used sort of interchangeably, it's a little confusing. What is the difference between a billing document and an invoice? Okay, they're more or less the same thing, except that a billing document is internal, right? It's an internal document. That, that, that is evidence of the fact that a customer uh, has been billed. Okay? Invoice is the document you actually send to the customer. Okay? But many times they use it interchangeably. Um, so you know, information wise they probably contain identical information. Okay. So billing uh, obviously is the process that supports creating of invoices for products and services. Okay, so you can see here that it's two different things. Invoices are created based on billing documents. Okay, uh, now you may, you may create credit and debit memos. Okay, that is uh, uh, you you may have of course when you you know when the customer buys something, you'll bill the customer, right? But it's also possible that uh, the supplier supplied you something, right, and then you return the item. Right, so you may have to ask the supplier for money. That is the other other way of this. Um, and then, of course, you the billing process cancel can uh, uh, allow you to cancel previously posted billing documents. Maybe there's been a mistake. Cancel it and recreate it. Um, and of course, automatically it will transfer the billing document to accounting. Okay. And the posting that takes place when you do the billing is this. Right. The revenue is uh, credited and customer account is debited. Okay, so it's the basis for invoicing and clearly, of course, it's useful for monitoring customer payments as well. Right, so same thing, how do you create billing documents? Billing documents are created against deliveries. Okay, so you could combine multiple deliveries into one billing document or you can take a billing document and split it. Uh, you can take a delivery and split it into multiple billing documents. Okay, just all both of these are possible. Okay, so structure of a billing document, same thing, header and items, just like a delivery document. <clears throat> Once again, 
overview header and item views are available for this as well. So what are the effects of creating billing documents? We saw the effects earlier of creating uh, uh, posting goods issue. Now we are looking at the effects of creating billing documents. So you've got a billing document. Uh, clearly it, it, it created uh, an accounting implication. Right, so uh, it made an, uh, an accounts uh, uh, receivable that was created. Right? <coughs> uh, and of course it updates the sales information system because we just created uh, revenue. Uh, updates the order and the outbound delivery. And it sends information to profitability analysis, which is the profitability segment aspect of it. So once again, the, we booked revenue. So obviously there is something which has happened in several segments as a result of this. This is just a status update here. Okay, so payment, this is the customer making a payment as a result of our invoicing the customer. Okay, so it's a part of financial accounting now, right? So as far as sales and distribution is concerned, creating a billing document ends the process. Now financial accounting now has open items. After billing the customer, the customer has open items. So now we have to uh, collect the payment against that. Right, so obviously the payment process allows posting payments against invoices and also to review the differences. You know, if the customer pays less, then we can see the differences and still keep track of what is still owed by the customer. Okay, now in the sales and distribution module, you would have noticed that it's got a very powerful feature called as the document flow. Right, um, so, so you know, uh, environment display document flow. Right, that what it will do is from any of the sales and distribution documents, you know, from the inquiry, from the order, from the outbound delivery, uh, from the invoice, or from the billing document, from any of these documents, you can pull up the document flow. In fact, that's what is shown here, right? From order, delivery, invoice, uh, accounting document, you can pull up the, uh, the document flow. It's going to show you all the relevant documents, right? So in this example, it's showing you that there was a standard order, delivery was created, and then it's showing you the sub-documents within the delivery, right? The warehouse operation document, okay, which we normally won't see because we don't use the warehouse management module, right? And then you've got the goods issue posting, the invoice, and then the accounting document, and so on. And payment has not yet been made yet, right? That's why it's saying not clear yet. Okay, if the payment had been made, you would have seen that also, clear. Right? So this is showing you all the related documents and from this screen you can go to any of these documents. Right? You can select a document and then say display document and it will open up that particular document. Okay? Uh, so you can do it from, from any of these documents. Okay? You can pull up the same flow from any of the documents. So that's a really powerful feature that the sales and distribution module supports. <clears throat> the same things, same. I'm just reminding you about the schedule line aspect. Sales orders have schedule lines. Uh, other documents don't. Okay, so here we are just looking at the integration of the sales and distribution module with the other modules. Right? Already we have seen, as we discussed, we saw that it has a connection with uh, uh, inventory management, materials management in general, inventory and warehouse management, the financial accounting, obviously, you know, when you post. Uh, goods issue, this financial accounting implication. When you create a billing document, there's a financial accounting implication. Profitability analysis, we saw that when you generate revenue, it's going to feed in information to profitability analysis, materials management, uh, stock, uh, you know, goods issue, and then uh, availability check as well with materials management. Reservations also, right? So it's got all of those integrations. Warehouse management, we talked about picking. Uh, these we'll see later on, like project system, we'll see this integration later on when we look at the project management module. Sales information system, obviously, the, you know, that system is going to depend on data generated by sales and distribution. Uh, and in production planning, you know, whenever there is a make to order scenario, there's obviously a linkage, right? You've got a sales order, you're going to manufacture against it, so it's going to flow, the information from sales and distribution is going to flow into those. Okay, so for each of these integrations, uh, you know, it's a good idea if you just think mentally about what, what does it really mean. Common sense will help you to infer the answers. See, many times in the exam, 
uh, you have to infer the answers, infer the correct answers, right, with, based on the information given. So even if you don't remember, you can still just reason out the correct answers. And the fact that they tell you how many correct answers are there is another very vital piece of information that you can use in your process of elimination. <clears throat> and there's a lot of time, so, uh, you know, you don't have to hurry. Okay, so now we're looking at uh, reporting and analysis, okay, which is the, uh, lots of information sources uh, in sales order management, okay, and then lots of risks, uh, you know, lists and other reports that are generated. We'll look at each of these shortly. There are online lists and online reporting, work lists and document flow. Document flow, we already spoke about it. The, you know, the, the document flow that allows you to see all the related documents from any of those documents. That is document flow. Work lists, we'll shortly look at it. Online lists and online reporting. There are many lists that you can just pull up from the thing. You know, for example, you want to see a list of sales orders by customer X. You can just pull it up right from there. Just go to search for sales orders and then you'll be able to pull it up. Okay. And then the sales information system provides you more detailed kinds of analysis and it uses the business warehouse component of SAP. So we talk about information structures, standard analysis, flexible analysis and so on. Okay. So you've got your sales information system, right, which is part of the logistics information system. Now um, it's part of the, you know, there's this component called logistics information library that allows you to integrate various analyses and reports. Okay, this is just the standard thing that the system provides. Now, uh, you see here, ABAP query. Okay, now sometimes you want ad hoc reports which are not supported by default within the system, right? By default, the system provides certain standard reports, which, you know, historically they may have found useful, most, most customers want it, so they put it into the system. But you may want certain very specific kinds of reports and those reports you can write using uh, queries, right? Those are ad hoc reports, which are written in ABAP, which is the programming language that SAP uses. It doesn't support SQL? SQL? No, no, no. no. PL SQL is just Oracle based, right? Your SAP system may be running on some other database system altogether. And I think SAP recently bought yeah, Cybase? Yeah, Cybase. They bought Cybase, so yes. yeah. They would love not to hear the word PL SQL, I guess. Okay, so online lists, uh, you know, you can get lists of all kinds of things, open quotations, back orders, delivery dues, billing dues, just various lists that can be generated. Those are called online lists because you can just pull them up. Um, work lists are part of the workflow system. You know, for example, let's say you've created a sales order, right? You've created lots of sales orders. Now, somebody in the uh, shipping department has to know which are all the orders that now have to be shipped. Right, that's work for them now. Now that the sales orders have been saved, they've got work to do. And once those people have shipped, the people in the billing department have work to do because they now have to bill for all the things that were delivered. Right, and once billing has been done, the people in the financial accounting, you know, they need to wait for the payments to come. So all of these are work lists that get generated. Some task gets completed, it becomes work for somebody else in the organization. Right? So those are all the various work lists uh, in the SAP system. I'm sorry, I think I got lost a little bit. I, um, I, I don't remember this part. But do we have to create an invoice for every billing document? Yeah. So it's an invoice for every billing document. You don't actually wait until you ship all the items within that purchase order to issue one. You can wait if you want. I mean, you can combine multiple things and then invoice them together. Multiple deliveries and then invoice them together. Okay. You can do that. Okay. Uh, so just examples of you know online lists, all kinds of things that you could see. Um, just some some analysis. You could think of any kind of analysis. You want to see the list of orders to, to a, by a particular customer, list of orders in a particular region, list of orders during a particular time period. You can think of anything that you want. All of those are online lists. Uh, you know, and, or you want you may pull up documents with specific status. You know, what are all the quotations which are still active? What are all the quotations that have expired? All kinds of things. 
Okay, what are all the orders, for example, which have not been shipped? Things like that. Okay, you can pull up any number of uh, these kinds of reports. And these are all the statuses they're talking about. Valid, open, locked, incomplete, uh, etc. This is just the example of work list. The thing that I was explaining earlier that, uh, you know, so once you've saved all the orders, it creates a shipping work list. Right? That is, in other words, it's not that it has to be generated specifically. As you keep saving orders, the people in the shipping department, they can just see, okay, what are all the orders that need to be shipped? Right? So that's a work list. Because those things have, they have to now do. Uh, and once they've done that, uh, they've created all these outbound deliveries, then that becomes a billing work list. Right? Because the people in the billing department now have to bill customers for all these deliveries. Right? So the saved orders become a work list for the shipping people. The deliveries created become a work list for the uh, billing people. Actually, it goes the other way. So one, two, shipping and then picking. picking. Oh, picking. Oh, it's coming here. Sorry. Okay. So you do the picking and then, of course, you're going to... Uh, no, it's... Uh, come, this is creating this as well as that. Okay. Right? You created the outbound delivery. You picked. Right? Uh, after goods issue posting three, this comes. Yeah, this line is uh, very misleading. Right. So after you do the goods issue posting, only then of course you can do the uh, generate the billing document and so on. Okay. So the point is that once work has been completed at one stage, you know, it generates work for the next stage, and uh, those are all work lists within the SAP system. Okay. Uh, so now we are looking at the reporting things, and within SAP, all the reporting capabilities are achieved through their business warehouse solution. It's a data warehousing concept. We'll talk about it a little in slightly greater detail over the weekend when we discuss data warehousing. But as always, you've got uh, characteristics, key figures, and time units. Okay. What are all some of the characteristics in, in sales is all of these things. You can think of a lot more. And the key figures, of course, are things like, uh, you know, number of incoming orders, sales volume, volume, uh, you know, returns, etc. All of these are quantities, right, based on which you can perform kinds of analysis. You know, calculate averages, calculate, uh, you know, sum them up and do all those kinds of things. Okay. And then you can uh, organize all of this by time period. Okay. So it's just the standard thing. Uh, for, for every module, you've got predefined what are called as information cubes that SAP has. And those cubes are based on these characteristics and key figures. Okay, this is just showing a real small snapshot of what is there. They all of them have reports. See, when they say information system and reporting, it's all based on these. Okay, and you can create additional structures. See, these are just predefined structures that they have. You can create your own additional structures based on your own specific requirements for uh, reporting. Right, and here, like I said, we've just scratched the surface here. But there are additional information structures for all of these things within sales. Okay, uh, and of course you can do certain standard analyses are provided. Uh, you know, just some reports and drill down in greater detail and things like that. Okay, now what you can do with these standard analyses is, of course, you can print these reports, and then you can download these into spreadsheet programs. You know, for example, it uh, it'll create an Excel spreadsheet for you with some of this information. You can then take it into Excel and perform all kinds of analyses that you want. Or you can email it to others using the SAP's uh, you know, workflow component. OK, so that completes sales and distributions. SD is a very important module um, within this. And in terms of number of questions, also it's supposed to be very important. So we've completed an important one here. <coughs>